In Semarang, Central Java, Indonesia, integrated coastal zone management is being used to address disaster risks like coastal flooding, salinity, and land subsidence. In this area, various measures, including ecosystem-based measures, are being implemented to reduce flood risk with integrated approaches. Integrated coastal zone management is a multidisciplinary approach to manage populated coastal areas that are exposed to multiple hazards. It's an approach that's been taken at various places, and it can be implemented by paying attention to some key factors to realize it. Nature-based solutions are at the center of this approach. For a detailed description beyond this video, please refer to the Ecosystem-Based Disaster Risk Reduction Case Study and Exercise Sourcebook, on which this video is indebted. In Semarang, many people live in coastal areas surrounded by ponds and agricultural lands. This area has been vulnerable to various types of disasters. These areas suffer from tidal inundation and land subsidence, problems expected to be exacerbated by sea level rise in the region. And this jeopardizes the livelihoods of the affected people. Lowland residents are also considered vulnerable to coastal flooding. They depend on fishing and they are reluctant to re relocate to other less vulnerable areas. This is especially true for the urban poor. Residents in flood prone areas often decide to stay put in their homes even though they know the risks involved. And this usually happens when people have no economic alternatives and face the possibility of losing their livelihoods. In recent years, Semarang has been faced with major natural disasters. Flooding and land subsidence are significant problems, and the risk has been magnified by the change of land use and associated needs for groundwater. Urbanization and industrialization have been occurring in the lowlands, expanding residential, recreational, and industrial areas. This expansion also comes with an associated overexploitation of groundwater. These problems have been well known for a long time, but still the issues have intensified in the last two decades as Samarang has experienced uncontrolled urbanization that has resulted in highly unsustainable land use changes. The predicted global sea level rise could also increase flooding in coastal cities, including the highly urbanized coast of Java, where Samarang is located. The city of Samarang and the Indonesian government are taking measures and in implementing integrated coastal zone management to alleviate the problem of flooding. The European Commission defines the concept of integrated coastal zone management as a dynamic, multidisciplinary, and iterative process to promote sustainable management of coastal zones. It covers the full cycle of information collection, planning, decision-making, management, and monitoring of implementation. In the case of Semarang, Indonesia, the coastal zone management includes structural, non-structural, and ecosystem-based measures. The main structural measures include flood control and low-lying areas, embankment and drainage systems, shoreline reclamation, pumping stations, and polder facilities. And these structural measures are mainly implemented by local and national government. Non-structural measures focus on strengthening the organization framework for disaster management, coastal planning and management, and education. And these measures are mainly implemented by local community groups and non-government organizations. However, flood management infrastructure to control underground water is not by itself sufficient. A recent study on water management and governance in Semarang indicates that flood management infrastructure solely based upon controlling the water flow in the city is not sufficient, and it points at the limitation of large infrastructure solutions in general. And this is the context where we can think of nature-based solutions. With flood risk management in Semarang, the conservation of mangrove ecosystems is particularly important. Healthy mangrove ecosystems can protect coastal areas from erosion and coastal flooding, and also increase the resilience of communities to cope with the effects of climate change. If implemented correctly, it can help with flood risk management in vulnerable areas. However, in Samarang, the remaining mangrove ecosystems are under pressure from intense agricultural land use and industrial and residential demands. The economic loss due to the degradation of mangrove ecosystems is estimated at around 61,000 US dollars per hectare per year which really underscores the importance of this environmental issue. Therefore, Semarang focuses on ecosystem-based measures to protect the remaining mangrove forests and reforest the mangroves. These measures help protect and restore the ecosystem itself and have a direct economic value as they also protect fish ponds. Local mangrove restoration and conservation programs have also been established to enhance the adaptive capacity of the coastal communities. For example, the Village Climate Program disseminates adaptation strategies at the district level 
which includes mangrove rehabilitation and conservation to reduce erosion and also increase the soil surface. This kind of approach will also bring income alternatives to local communities. This case study of Semarang demonstrates how integrated coastal zone management can serve as a planning instrument that integrates ecosystem-based disaster risk reduction. The measures implemented in Semarang can be assembled as part of an integrated coastal zone management strategy that promotes sustainable development. This strategy would also reduce the vulnerability of coastal populations to natural disasters and climate change impacts. The implementation of ecosystem-based disaster risk reduction measures should also be part of a holistic approach that includes institutional and legal development, improved environmental management, public awareness of disaster risks, and the participation of all relevant stakeholders during the implementation of these measures. In Samarang, the measures described are being implemented by different stakeholders and at different scales. Several levels of government and the private sector are focusing on infrastructure development, while the local government, communities, and NGOs are working on ecosystem-based measures. Various stakeholders must be involved in planning as well as in monitoring. The main challenges in establishing these measures are the limited financial resources and the need to relocate people from flood-prone areas. These issues have led to local resistance and loss of public support. Also, the participation of the community in decision-making must be more effectively addressed. In the case of Semarang, the decentralization of coastal management has been strengthened with the view that local commitment is crucial in making DRR solutions sustainable. The Semarang case shows that coastal zone management requires an integrated, multi-sectoral approach, and nature-based solutions can be central to this. Coastal zone management needs institutional arrangements to address multifaceted challenges. Recent massive flooding in 2021 underlines that the current flood risk management approach is still not sufficient. There is much room for improvement. In this respect, the holistic approach discussed in this video is a key for further development. And continued monitoring and evaluation for the effectiveness of ecosystem-based disaster risk reduction is required.